Biomaterials are commonly implant materials that have been designed to go into the body and repair or replace tissues. One of the most famous being total hip replacements. But now we're developing new materials that can talk to the body and actually tell the cells to regenerate tissues back to their original form as the material biodegrades. And that's not just for things like bone or cartilage, but also things like soft tissues such as chronic wounds or even vital organs. These regenerative biomaterials can come in different shapes and sizes. It could come as a, a framework which works just like a scaffolding for a building, only this time the cells are the builders. They walk into the scaffolding, they lay down the building blocks, and then the tissue grows as the scaffold biodegrades. But they could also be really tiny, tiny particles, nanoparticles, particles so small that you can't see them. And these could be injected into the body and they could even seek out cancer cells and kill them or perhaps even cross the blood-brain barrier to treat diseases such as Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. A common challenge with all these new biomaterials is, is for us to make sure that they tell the cells to do what we want them to do and that they don't make the cells do something we don't want them to do. There are two main reasons why we need these new regenerative biomaterials. One is that there are many diseases and conditions out there that we still don't have effective clinical treatment for but also we're generally living longer into older age and we're outliving our body parts. These materials won't just directly help patients, but they're also desperately needed because there's increasing financial burden on services like the NHS and social care. And if more effective treatments and devices will reduce the cost in the long term. My favorite regenerative material is bioglass. Now, it looks just like a normal window glass, but actually when you put it into the body, it starts to dissolve and bonds to your bones and actually releases ions that tell the cells to get more active and produce new bone. Now, when bioglass is used in the clinic, it's used for when someone has a hole in the bone that won't heal itself. And the surgeon will take a sachet like this, and it's just a sachet of white powder, They'll open it up, take out the powder, put it into the hole in the bone, and then the particles will knit together with the new bone and stimulate it to regrow. The original bioglass is essentially made by melting sand and other types of rocks together in the furnace, the temperature of lava, and you pour it out and you get a nice glass powder. The other way of making bioglass is by through chemistry, where you actually grow the glass through an assembly process. And that's called the sole gel process. Bioglass is amazing at healing bones. And it's also incredible when it comes to chronic wounds. And these are wounds that are, have not healed even under long-term treatment. You can put in a cotton wool-like bioglass and it can heal those wounds. It also has this ability to kill bacteria. So it's been effective also where antibiotics have failed. But one problem with glass is that it is brittle. So now we're making this material we call bouncy bioglass, which is bounces just like a kid's powerball. And we found that's been particularly good at healing cartilage in the joints. So it actually tell cells to get active and produce articular cartilage rather than scar-like cartilage that current technology produces. Bouncy bioglass is made by growing the glass network through chemistry and introducing a biodegradable polymer as we grow the glass network. So they knit together at the molecular level. And then you get really good interaction between the components and get real synergy of their properties. Almost every feature of a biomaterial can affect how it talks to cells and how they respond. And so we need to get the surface chemistry right, but we also can 3D print these materials into specific architectures that also provide the exact framework an environment that's ideal for the cells. As we look to the future, biomaterials are not only going to be used as things that go inside the body, but they're also going to play a hugely important role in biosensing. And biosensors are important for maybe determining what disease someone has, but also just determining what pathogens might be present in an environment, whether there's a virus there or whether there's a bacteria.
My name is Anna. I'm a second year PhD student in Professor Julian Jones's group, and I'm working on SLA 3D printed bone scaffolds for bone regeneration implants. Bone scaffolds are needed because after a bone trauma, a bone can only regenerate itself up to a certain size. After this, there is a need for surgical intervention. So right now, the science is moving towards uh, printing and generating uh, synthetic bone scaffolds that would act as a 3D printed template for tissue ingrowth and also would actively stimulate the natural regeneration of the bone. The material that I'm looking at needs to be both bioactive, so it needs to stimulate the natural regeneration of the bone, but also it needs to be very strong to match the mechanical properties of the natural bone. That's why I incorporate silica in my material that gives bioactivity, but also I 3D print my material and in that way I have uh, control over the architecture of my scaffold. In my trials, I first synthesize my materials, and this is done by wet chemistry route. Then I 3D print it with a laser printer, and at the end, I characterize my material in order to be able to optimize my synthesis and also identify the best trial material. Currently, there isn't technology available for healing of large bone defects, and we're hoping that our technology can be translated to the market and will help people with large bone trauma and bridge this gap. Mm -hmm.